What experience has been most valuable to you in helping you develop emotional intelligence? Obviously, um, like you didn't come across this, like you didn't just like, you weren't born with this, right? With this realization that emotional intelligence is just so incredibly important for entrepreneurship and for the success of a business. So um, I think one question is, you know, was there a particular experience that led you to develop it? And um, my personal twist on it is just, I'd love to hear how that experience for you, particularly as a woman, like how that affected you, particularly as a woman, because I think, um, you know, I am the only girl on like Jumbo Ventures eboard right now, and we're definitely making efforts, but um, as someone who resonates a little bit with that, I'd love to hear a little bit more about what you have to say about that. Sure, absolutely. So here's the cool thing. I always knew that relationships with other people mattered, right? To me, I'm an only child, right? I always joke, I never had an unconditional peer relationship. I didn't have a sibling. I couldn't smack somebody around or slam a door in their face and be like, oh, they'll love me tomorrow. If I was like that with my friends, I would have zero friends, right? And so as an only child, I was very focused on being a good friend, right? So I think from my life's experiences, I always understood at some level that I needed to be good, good to other people if they were going to be good to me, right? So parlaying that into how EQ kind of came into the forefront. Well, I, so um, I was on the board of the Women's Center at Tufts. I was a women's studies minor. And my freshman year, we created, and then I was part of a team that went to freshman dorms and sororities talking about healthy and abusive relationships. We had two main things. It was healthy and abusive relationships and body image in the media. And I was already really primed to recognize that the way that other people perceived women mattered and the way that women perceive themselves mattered, right? So I think for me, it was building upon a natural inclination that I already had that relationships really mattered. But then I said, well, but how do you handle when people don't get along? And what do you do if you have an idea that is unpopular? And how do you show up as your full self when you're really afraid that if you let your freak flag fly, nobody's going to like you. So I had some instincts and then I started exploring, well, what does this look like in action, right? I understood that these were things that were part of being human, but I didn't know what to call it. And I didn't even know if it really mattered. Remember, as I told you at the top of the program, it used to be called soft skills. Who wants anything that's a soft skill? That seems totally like an add-on, an afterthought. And so what's really, so for me, I started to seek out where, in what disciplines does this thing I have an instinct about, being a good friend, where does it matter? And that's when I started finding research, finding you know, disciplines that said, oh, this is what it looks like to be in relationships with other people. Oh, this is what it looks like to self-reflect, right? And back then it wasn't some, EQ wasn't the language. And there was no entrepreneurship center, right? So it was more like, is it sociology? Is it psychology? What, where does this matter? International relations, right? Was all about being able to get, I mean, that was, IR was the biggest major when I was at Tufts. That's why people went to Tufts. I started out in IR, realized I hated like half the classes and that's when I switched to Spanish. But, you know, so it was all about this idea of cross-cultural communication. How were we, right? So there was always this buzz, this understanding that it mattered to get along with people at the most basic level for you to actually be able to move a project forward, right? So I think that for me, that's where EQ evolved from. I was the national spokesperson and head of our anti-violence initiative at the headquarters of the Girl Scouts. So I managed millions of federal dollars, earmarks, that's your dollars, your tax dollars, was what I was being given from the federal government through GSUSA to do anti-violence programming across the country. And I was working in crime prevention and gang prevention and internet safety, which is what we called it then, cyberbullying, right? And bullying and relational aggression. So another place where it was validated that getting along with other people mattered was because the federal government gave GSUSA millions of dollars for little old me in my 20s to manage and to give out all across the country, okay? So again, I was being given these, this input, 
that relationships mattered. And so I think that for me, it evolved over time that I had to find the language, that it wasn't something that was immediately visible, but it was something that everybody kept telling me mattered. And, and this is really important. It was something I was really fucking good at, okay? I was really good at making relationships, at making people feel safe, at caring about the fact that they felt respected. I knew that all of that was important. And so what I was looking for was something that could validate what I knew and what I was good at and what I enjoyed. So again, going back to you don't want the crown on your head and the shackles around your ankles, finding the thing that you're good at. And I was really good at this. And so I sought out, I said, I know this has to be something that's bigger than me. And actually sixseconds.org, which I may have mentioned at the top, which is the premier emotional intelligence organization, they talk about emotional intelligence by definition is being smarter with emotions, not smarter about emotions. Plenty of people are all kinds of smart about them, but with them. And the four things that research shows happens when you have a higher EQ is that you are better at your relationships, that you have a higher quality of life, that you're more effective, and that you increase your own well being. I think that those are pretty good things to have, right? So it's again going with your strengths. If you're good at something and it feels meaningful to you, figure out the larger ecosystem in which that's happening. Always centering your relationships. Organizations are about people, right? That's one of the things that people have forgotten. That's why I talked about the fast company survey. Centering people in your organization, right? I started my career as a fundraiser. And what I learned very long time ago is that people don't give to causes. They give to people they like. People first, causes second. That's how you raise a shit ton of money. It's not because you wrote the very best ask letter ever. Uh uh. It's because people connected with you, that whole transference of enthusiasm thing, right? So, again, as women, a lot of the time, women are um, raised, for better or worse, to prioritize their friendships and their relationships and their romantic relationships. That can go off the rails big time. So, there's the whole kind of you know, downside to putting so much into your relationships, you lose yourself. I'm not advocating that, certainly not. But as women, if you have been raised to prioritize relationships, see that as a huge asset. See that as an incredible tool in your toolkit that you are good at connecting because you've been told your whole life it was a skill you needed to foster in order to be successful, right? And then using that to your advantage, right? So to Ben's point where, you know, you go to people and you say, who's really great at connecting with other people? Do you like talking about things that you're excited about? Are you great at idea generation? Are you excellent at facilitating? Do you bring out other people's genius? Then I want you on the board of this startup because we need somebody exactly like you. And you may be going to a discipline to find that where they have no concept of how to code, where they have maybe no con, they have no business acumen. Maybe they have been totally in a humanities place. However, you recognize that their ability to connect with other people genuinely, authentically, and that they enjoy it and that they're good at it is going to be the ace in the hole for your leadership team. So I think that that's a really big part of this. It's finding the things that you enjoy, not doubting. No. I don't want to say not doubting. That's like 27 negatives in one sense. <laughs> Go with what you believe is valuable and important. Because I can tell you this as a sociologist. The odds are if something is important to you, it is important to a lot of other people, right? That's what sociology is. The idea that we as groups of humans have shared characteristics, right? Psychology is a little different. That's the whole everybody's individual. That's not my discipline. I come from a place where I have said to people, if you tell me your age, where you grew up, your religious background, the education level of your parents, the socioeconomics under which you grew up, and your gender and your race, I can probably tell you a whole lot more about your lived experience than you would like, right? 
Because each one of us wants to leave. Oh, you could never peg me. I had sucked. No, it's just not true. There are these categories that we sit in that influence our lived experiences. Use the categories in which you sit as assets that you bring, shifting the narrative on what and who matters and saying, I have all these assets and what I bring to the table is meaningful. And if I can't figure out yet exactly why, I'm going to go figure out this thing that's always been important to me and I'm going to show why it matters. And then I'm going to show up in spaces and places that don't usually have people who are speaking the language I am, literally or figuratively. And I'm going to show them why it matters. And I think that that's what any of us who is sitting in a community where we are the minority, whatever that is, right? We have feminized spaces, right? Look at education. Look at early childhood education. When men apply for early education jobs, unfortunately, I have a client. She owns a preschool. The parents still get freaked out. Well, why does a grown man want to work with children? What? That still happens. So I'm saying when you are the minority in your ecosystem, I'm not talking about racial, ethnic, or socioeconomic, or gender minority. I'm talking about when there are not a lot of people who look like you, whatever that means. It's You need to talk about what you bring in the way that you bring it, not trying to mimic the other people because that's inauthentic and you can't do it for long before you burn out.